I hope you all enjoyed the chapter Animal Kingdom. And understood how to classify all the living organisms and name them based on their characteristics. Now, this is the final and lovely topic, nomenclature. By which you learn to give a proper and specific naming to every species. This is very important and everyone needs to remember these rules. Framed by Carlos Linnaeus. Let's know something about Carlos Linnaeus. Carlos Linnaeus was born in Sweden and was a doctor by profession. He was interested in the study of plants. At the age of 22, he published his first paper on plants. While serving as a personal physician of a wealthy government official, he studied the diversity of plants in his employer's garden. Later, he published 6 plus 14 papers and also brought out the famous book, Systema Naturae, from which all fundamental taxonomical researches have taken off. His system of classification was a simple scheme for arranging plants to be able to identify them again. Nomenclature Why there is a need for systematic naming of living organisms? Find out the names of the following animals and plants in as many languages as you can. Tiger Peacock Ant Neem Lotus Potato Don't you feel that a specific common name is needed? As you might be able to appreciate, it will be difficult for people to speak or write in different languages to know when they are talking about the same organism. This problem was resolved by agreeing upon a scientific name for organisms in the same manner that chemical symbols and formally for various substances are used the world over. The scientific name for an organism is thus unique and can be used to identify it anywhere in the world. The system of scientific naming or nomenclature we use today was introduced by Carlos Linnaeus in the 18th century. The scientific name of an organism is the result of the process of classification which puts it along with the organisms it is most related. But when we actually name the species, we do not list out the whole hierarchy of groups. It belongs to.
Instead, we limit ourselves to writing the name of the genus and species of that particular organism world over. It has been agreed that both these names will be used in Latin forms. What is binomial nomenclature? The biological system of naming the organisms in which the name is composed of two terms where the first term indicates the genus and the second term indicates the species of the organisms. Certain conventions are followed while writing the scientific names. The name of the genus begins with the capital letter. The name of the species begins with a small letter. When printed, the scientific name is given in italics. When written by hand, the genus name and the species name have to be underlined separately. That's all students. I hope you enjoyed the chapter Diversity in Living Organisms overall. Do remember the nomenclature rules and regulations? Start observing all the organisms and understand their names and place in this diverse living world. Come on, start your first step. Before that, once watch the following animals in your school lab. Observe in your school lab the specimen of starfish. Collect a starfish when you visit a nearby sea beach. And observe its external characters. If not possible, go to your school lab and observe the specimen of starfish. Note down your observations in your notebook. What do you find on the skin of the starfish? Are there any arms and rays shaped? Do you find a small hole in the middle of the starfish? These are exclusively marine living and spiny skinned animals like a Hedgehog. Kynos means spines. Derm means skin. All echinoderms are marine. cannot live in fresh water or on land. They are bottom dwellers and benthic. Most are pentameral which means that they have five-fold symmetry with rays of arms in fives or multiples of five. 
observe fish in your school lab. Or collect a fish from a fishmonger and observe its external characteristics. You might have seen a long spine inside the body of a fish. This is the backbone of the fish. From fish onwards, all animals possess backbones and they are termed vertebrates. Observe the skin of the fish. What does it look like? Cut, open the fish and observe its heart. How many chambers are seen its heart? What will happen if you keep a small fish out of water for some time? Think, why? Fishes are the first organisms to possess backbones. The body is covered with scales. The heart is two chambered. These are aquatic animals and cannot survive on land. There are specialized organs called gills that is useful for its respiration. Observe in your school lab the specimen of a cockroach. or collect a cockroach or any insect and observe it. What does the skin look like? Did you observe any hard layers on the skin? How many parts is the body divided into? Observe the legs and see. How does and what does it look like? Name some more animals whose legs are jointed as seen in the cockroach. These are included in Arthropoda. Arthro means jointed. Pods means legs. As they have jointed legs, most of the animals in this group are insects. The body is divided into three parts head, thorax, and abdomen. Points to remember. Differences that are observed in very closely related populations are called variation. In nature, no two organisms are identical. Classification helps us in exploring the diversity of life forms. Classification is the systematic study of organisms present in nature. Classification of life forms is closely related to their evolution. The major characteristics considered for classifying all organisms into five major kingdoms like Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia are whether they are made up of prokaryotic or 
eukaryotic cells. Whether the cells live solitarily or in colonies. Whether the cells have a cell wall and whether they prepare their food. Recall, 